So we have two sets of minutes to approve. Move we'll approve the minutes of the January 21st meeting and also the uh, meeting, uh, special meeting on February 1st. That was the tour of the building. I'd like to propose an amendment to the January 21st uh, minutes in that we spent a lot of time with our public comment and all five school committee members and our principal responded affirming the value of our teachers and I wish that we could have that reflected in our public record. Is I don't know what the what the uh, practices so, so we've got a, a motion without a second oh no sorry it's not an additional number um <laughs> we're, we're in hey, this hi. how you doing elliot <laughs> you guys know elliot pro he's yes. the head of the finance yes. committee <laughs> can see it see it Anybody you know Shelly, the business manager? No, no. Oh, yeah. Hi, Shelly Frida. So, yep. since we don't have a second. Well, I, I should second it just for discussion. So, that we, you know, just to find out that if that's the will of the committee, then I can go back and certainly uh, um, put something about that in. You made the original motion. I made the motion to. To approve the minutes. And she's amending that, right? Or you... I'm, well, I'm proposing an amendment. Or well, Let's make the amendment specific. So I propose the amendment. You propose, propose to amend the minutes by adding the statements. Okay. Yeah. I propose to amend the minutes by... Uh, to reflect that all five school committee members and the principal responded to public comment affirming the value of our teachers. Okay. Second. Um, I'm okay with something. I'm open to wording. Yeah. <laughs> just tell me that once again, just so to... Uh, All five school committee members and the principal made statements in response to public comment. Affirming the value of our teachers. Yeah. Is someone said, because I have a question about it, but first there should be a second. I suppose. I'll give the second. Okay, so hang on. This is. Greg. Um, are you wanting just that statement in the minute, or are you wanting a, state, a sort of summary of each member's comments? No, just that statement. I think something really similar to what we wrote in the public comment. After our just kind of okay. reflex. Okay, so make statements in uh, response to public comment. Seems like a sentence. What did Jessica, what was, how did you have yours worded, Jessica? I, I said that all school committee members and the principal um, individually responded affirming the value of the teachers. That's, yeah. That's all I wanted to say. I just wanted that reflected in our official record. Because I don't feel like the issue has been fully put to that. Okay, so let me read this again. Um, all five school committee members and the principal made statements in response to the public comment affirming the value of the teachers. You say personally affirming? I don't know. Individually affirming? Yeah. You said that one time. I don't know. You just have to make, I just want to make sure that I get this the way you want it. Is that okay? That, that's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm open to, to other suggestions. I'm, I'm good with that as it is. Yeah, I like that. I think, yeah. it, well, I think it fits. Okay. So uh, we have a motion, we have a second. Do we have any other discussion? Vote. Oh, all in favor? So that's 4-0 four, four to amend the 21, 21st minutes. Should we have a vote on the minutes of the yeah. February 1st? Absolutely. So, so we've got the same. I move to approve. Okay, so who was the, in the original motion for the 21st? That was you, you, me. You, you and cobbled together too. So, I cobbled, so we're just going to do that one. A separate, separate motion for the first. Okay, so we're just dividing them so that we take care of the first one and the second one will keep the same or it's already been moved and seconded. Um, and. 
that. All in favor? Aye. I'm abstaining. You're abstaining right, right there. Right there. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Alright. Financial right. statements. Sign of the warrants. There are seven warrants presented for signature totaling $68,855.27. Happy to take questions if you have them. Uh, the school choice and general fund expenditure reports were sent electronically. Um, again, happy to take questions. There's nothing major to report since our last meeting. We just met a few weeks back, so there's not a lot of change. But I did want you to know that as we're going through the shared central office expenditures, I'm just paying close attention at all of the elementary schools to make sure that the line items that are in Frontier do exist at the elementary level for 20 and for 21. Um, there are some instances where one school has this and then the next school doesn't. And so I'm just paying close attention to that. I don't think it's a financial issue in any way. Um, I just need to potentially move some funds around. So I just wanted to know if that's on the radar. Um, and I think that there is a larger boiler update, but what I know of it uh, is that we're going to move forward as discussed with the school choice funds and then the building use rental funds that we have available. And once we get through the bid process, it does look like we're going to have to put it out for bid. And then the freezer condenser replacement, I understand that that's already in process. <laughs> have they been here yet this week? Yep. Okay. Um, and the estimated cost on that was just under $10,000, and that will be paid from the school lunch account, as we discussed. And then we'll have a budget conversation in greater detail, but on the timeline right now. So the condenser is going to be done within a matter of It should be done this week, I days. think. It's yep. not done already. And the boiler is within the next week. The boiler is subject to how fast we can get through the bid process and have a satisfactory outcome there. And then once that's done, it's just a matter of days. That may not be till mid March. Say again? May not be till mid March. Okay. According to the timeline, we're going to use for a cog for that process. Right. Um, I was talking with you know, with Andrew Woods today regarding they got a pretty full plate right now, and so we might be able to, they might be able to send us our template because it may be pretty straightforward for us to do. Um, so we're working on that right now. Great. You saw that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Do we have any public comment? Oh. All right. So I guess uh, on to unfinished business. Update on the capital request. The boiler, we already we got where we could get there. And then on to the budget. Um, capital request. Before we skip over that. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, obviously, we had the tour on Saturday, which was great. Um, and I guess I just wanted to check in as far as the process going forward to make sure that um, we have to, I mean, I, I've seen other departments in town have already submitted the school, the town has a form for each item, okay, and, uh, you know, to which it's supposed to be attached some sort of way of coming up with a cost, whatever you've got for a cost estimate and so on, I'm sure you're familiar with those, but those actually need to, you know, we have to, I guess, decision here as to what we're doing or if we already sort of decided and where is Bill as far as getting that paperwork submitted. So um, I have the paperwork. I have it filled out. Up and I want to get the pricing for the carpet in this room mm -hmm. instead of doing the classrooms, doing the office carpet and this carpet, and hopefully it full, still falls in that same range. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, other requests will just have to be updated. The numbers we talked about the rim band. We put that in last year. Mm -hmm. The oil, um, the oil. Uh, spill emergency okay. ca uh, containment system there um, we put in last year um, the concern now is that those numbers are getting older and mm -hmm. so we're going to have to try to get reaffirm those numbers um, bill put a call into um, scott today just to hear what he had for thoughts on prioritizing mm -hmm. he kind of deferred it back to the school mm -hmm. and they saw everything and they understand mm -hmm. where these are at so mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I think the rim band projects in the probably be one to be funded over multiple years. Right. Um, and 
So you're kind of lining up the indoor carpet and the rim banding is kind of our A list, and then the B list be the um, uh, the oil the oil field, I'm not calling it an oil field, but the oil containment system, and then C would be the windows, because windows are going to probably be a multi-year project too, and so um, I think it's probably something to push a little harder next year for um, getting not just the price of the windows, but the what the full installation is, and then maybe we build a plan that says we want to do so many classrooms a year over three or four years, and therefore get that number on maybe 20000 a year to do that project. So that's my thoughts on those. Um, Can I ask you to list those in order of priority once more, please? Uh, sure. Um, <coughs> number one being um, to start the rim band um, project which would be over multiple years. The second one would be carpeting, um, upgrades the office carpet. Ben, jump in if I miss speak, because this is, yep. you know, and this room that we're in. And, and, and the guidance area, which is a smaller space. Now that needs to be, since I'm guessing that that number might not exceed 10,000, um, that needs to be presented as a multi-year plan to do, address all the flooring in the building and therefore to make sure it follows the rules for capital project. So that will be over, the, the carpet together right now is what was 13 or 18. Oh, that much? Yeah, oh, okay. um, just the square footage and such. So okay. um, then, then that's not a concern. Right, okay. right. And so, um, but the problem is we need to get a new number for this one. He's hoping to get them in here this week. Okay. Um, I just, you know, there's still time, but time, you know, all of a sudden there's not. And right. So we just need to I hope to have it. I hope to have it submitted by the end of the week. Okay. And then, so that would be the A list, hoping to get that funded this year. And the B list would be the oil emergency oil. Um, I don't know what they call it. It's a fixing how the oil is being stored and um, spill present preventage in a manhole cover. It's kind of this whole system together. And then the last one is the windows on the north side. Our, um, south side. South side. Yep. This side. Right. Those are the ones we're done. Thank you. Right. I, I messed yep. up yesterday too. Oh, and can I make a? Uh, I apologize. I know the meeting's going to go on, but um, what, what is the ring band system? Just a quick. <coughs> quick sure. So. Uh, I can show you a picture. Yeah, around the <laughs> perimeter of the entire building, um, it's the the ring band the. The, the material that's closest to the ground beneath that is the woods rotting out so there's no um, structural issues um, but it's uh, it's pretty significant um, as you start to pull away it actually so it's, the, it's the siding is mostly yellow and then as you get down there's a green aluminum sort of uh, thin sheet metal and behind that is, is wood that's rotting yeah so the foundational kind of Yep, and uh, the rim band is frequently um, being damaged by the wind and, and winter weather. Thank you. Yeah. And the, um, the scope of that project has increased. Um, initially, we thought it was much less. So this band goes all the way around and wires out behind it and cause rot. Yep. Right. We started that project last year. And it's a much larger was on the other one. It's interesting. Anything else on capital? So I'll, I'll submit those and I'll CC off the committee so you guys can submit it. Great. Outstanding. All right, I guess it's on to the, uh, the budget. Okay, so everybody should have a packet in front of them. Elliot, did you get something? Yeah. You, can, you can have mine right here. I've got, Keith, it's not here, so you can take Keith's. I've right. got uh, already. So I emailed all of these out electronically ahead of time. I know it's a lot to digest, um, but hopefully that helps you. Um, you guys want one to look at? Sure. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Share it with you, hopefully. Oh, thank you. Hopefully, 
hopefully it helped um, shed some light on what's taken place over the last few weeks with budget changes. So we originally came in first meeting with a percentage increase of 8.32%. Uh, we're currently at 4.59, which is down 3.73 or 110,000 from the last meeting. So um, Ben, other department heads, Darius and I have worked together to bring that number down to a more digestible number. Um, obviously still up for discussion on how far we need to bring that down, if at all. Uh, I also know that there's some changes to other funds that we probably want to talk about here. But I'll start with um, going over the narrative summary on the written page. Um, first, I want to explain a couple of things because it's hard to look at this document, which is the line-by-line -line summary, compared to the narrative. This document looks exactly at last year's approved budget compared to what we're proposing. This gives you more detailed information. For example, it tells you the entire salary increase that we're anticipating versus this sheet just shows you the difference. And that's not all reflected here necessarily because this is just pertaining to the general fund. Whereas the things that I'm referencing here, might, they might have other funding sources, especially related to salaries. But I wanted you to see the whole numbers when we talk about those. Um, so a few of the changes uh, that were made here are listed at the bottom to encompass that reduction. Um, so I'm jumping down about three quarters of the page where we talk about what we cut off of the general fund for the second draft. So teacher mentor stipends we had added into the budget for this um, next fiscal year. We had pulled them off of a grant. However, after many conversations just to try to keep trimming that number down, we decided to continue to fund those through the grant. And we did find out that we are getting that grant funding again next year. We just found out yesterday, so that's a plus for us. Um, we had put in a request for two brand new IA positions. We have pulled those off. That was one of the first things to get trimmed back. That was over $80,000, I'm, I'm sorry, over um, $40,000 that we were able to cut back there. And then uh, we have a reduction to the longevity payouts that our teachers are eligible for next year. And then I changed the funding source for two of our IAs. So that helped bring us down to the current 4.59%. Most of the other things up top um, that we talked about last time still exist. We have a small increase of $500 to nature's classroom. We added $1,500 for security for any unexpected maintenance with that new door system. We increased custodial wages by $3,000 to allow for additional summer support. Building general repairs increased by just under $3,000. We've been talking capital a lot. We know that we need that money. $3,000 is not enough, but it's helpful. Um, teacher salaries, again, as I explained, this is an overall increase. It doesn't hit the general fund in, in the same exact way as it's laid out here. Um, teachers are paid from multiple funding sources, but we are anticipating based on a potential contract settlement scenario that we have built in, uh, just shy of $80,000 in wage increases. IA wages, again, same scenario, not all hits the general fund because they are funded in other places. You'll actually see that the IA wages are decreased if you look at this line by line summary because we did move two of them onto school choice. Uh, but the IAs collectively will see an increase of $21,000 based on their contract that was settled last year. We talked last time about the uh, special education revolving fund. The revenue has changed over the last few years. We're unable to continue to fund that line at such a high level, so we've had to move two part-time staff back onto the local budget, so that was an increase of $45,000. That was directly to the general fund. And then there is a wage increase of just under $8,000 for any other personnel, central office staff, administration, principal, custodians. We have left in at this time that team leader position, which would be hired under the teacher contract. Um, we're hoping that we can leave that and move forward with this position in the budget based on the needs of the building. And um, that is an increase directly to general fund of $55,000. So you have the percentages there at the bottom just to give you a general idea of what we're talking about for numbers, percentage increase from one to four. And then I gave you some school choice info, although there is a more detailed sheet here, but I just wanted you to have that little snapshot of what we're looking at. 
I'm happy to take general fund questions before we start talking about school choice. If I can clarify anything or if there's something specific that you want to talk about. I was wondering, but it's probably a question for Ben. How many IAs are there in the building? C currently, mm -hmm. 24. And how many of them are one-on-one? -on -one? Give me a, a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay. So there's 24 currently, but we do have a placeholder in for a potential part-time um, that would be funded this year through special education. Um, but next year would need to get funded in a different spot. So um, we've I've looked at last year to the current act, last year's budget to the current actuals to what we're projecting for next year, and we're fluctuating between 24 from what was budgeted last year to 25 going into next year. Okay. We're currently at if we do hire this other position 24.5 for our actuals for this year. There's seven currently. Okay. These materials are really helpful. Thank you, Shelly. You're welcome. Uh, and sort of cradled out uh, the heavy hitters and some of the least movable, right? <clears throat> yeah, there's not a whole lot <clears throat> left to trim back. We're kind of at a point of saying um, an IA position would really be the likely reduction to make a significant difference or elimination of that new position that we're lobbying for. Let's talk about that a little bit. So we know that Normally, steady state, but I don't know where I can be looking at two and a half percent max growth revenue in the town, and we're still over four and a half. Um, let's just talk about why that's a smart financial decision to bring in the, uh, the team leader. Sure. I think um, just with the, the needs that we have across all grade levels. Um, our special education department, um, who consists of uh, a, an amazing group of educators, are stretched very, very thin. Um, we've seen an increase in needs across all the grade levels, um, specifically um, in early childhood, where um, we have uh, quite a few reach referrals coming in um, each, each year. Um, so that add to the special education numbers. The team leader would act as a go-between in central office and the special education department. Um, they would help with educational evaluations, um, help lead classes, um, help provide um, small group instruction at time as well. And um, uh, when, when some students are really struggling having uh, big feelings, if if you will, um, to help out in, in times of crisis, also. Yeah, I mean, I think right now the model that the amount of special needs and the complexity of those cases, um, I think that the, the position in the long run could be a safe one because we can start looking about how we're using personnel. Right now, um, you know, if you spend a day with Ben, he can't have a full meeting with you because he is that um, big feeling guy. Um, the crisis, <laughs> he's, he is the, the, the guy who's called in a crisis. He's, you know, to manage, um, you know, the whole school and this growing population that requires a lot of meetings, a lot of a family outreach, um, in, you know, and um, connection with families in those meetings. Um, that's kind of my hope is to, <coughs> with this position, um, being able to look at how to deliver special education as well um, and actually give him some breathing room to actually be doing some, um, instead of putting out fires, being able to do some planning and that kind of thing. So, and, yeah, and, and, the, and the other piece of that too is that uh, even though it might be seem like the easy button to make the number go down, 
uh, there's risks with out of district placement and legal. Uh, I mean, there's just a lot of potential downside to not having this position filled. Yeah, and I would I mean just echo what you said there. So the amount of um, high needs that are coming in that could have um, not necessarily be put in, out placed. But if things aren't running well, that then becomes questions from families, that is this the right placement and that kind of thing. And so being able to be um, increase that level of communication so that doesn't become, unless it's necessary, obviously, but um, sometimes we end up having those conversations when we feel like we can do it and the family's not sure. And a lot of it has to do with that back and forth in communication. Um, looking at these numbers, you know, um, Amanda, we're looking at the, the biggest expenditure is the position. Um, you know, we, you know, and I remember looking at this last year, the two and a half percent number, and this is where I'd love to get some um, guidance from, greater clarity from the finance committee, because we haven't made the two and a half number no. in the last five years. Yeah. You know, so our budget actually, our salary increases is over two and a half percent. Yeah. So it's, we can't, I don't know, and I know it's the problem, and I even brought it up with the legislature um, people that um, visited Sunderland a few weeks ago. Um, how do you build a budget when your salaries are larger than the town can wants or wants you to expand, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Cause it is all salaries, mm -hmm. um, you know, so I know finance committee can't just give us a number, you yeah. know, because they're going to look at all the different moving parts. Um, but, you know. Are there, um, is there a similar position to this in the three other schools? In all three other schools, no. There's a similar position to this in Deerfield, and there's a similar position to this in Frontier. Mm -hmm. at, at Deerfield, there are additional positions that don't exist here as well, such as school adjustment counselors, um, full-time special education secretary, um, multiple uh, guidance counselors, school psychologists, kind of a dual role. Because I'm just thinking that there should be some sort of, and keeping in mind that all the schools have different needs, you would think that it would be somewhat, not necessarily streamlined, but there would be some similarities between the positions at the four schools in this regard. I would say yes, however, the smaller schools have lower incidence, right? and so the principal can take up more of those incidents. Um, you know, and the other role, each building's kind of done differently depending on their staffing. You know, if you look at, you know, you know Conway, which you had 100 and, 135 students total, um, you get twice that, um, you know, just under twice that here. Um, you, know, you're, you know, you're talking about their school psychologist can act as a, a leader or, you know, the principal can act more as a leader. You're talking about the number of cases, you know, that's, mm -hmm. and we're, as you just explained, Deerfield, which is, it's more similar. I mean, Deerfield's numbers I just happen to have the sheet in front of me, and their population's um, just around 386. So, um, you know, it's full 150 more. Um, but they have multiple positions there. So, yeah, it's, and, and then so, so with Waitley and Conway being significantly smaller, um, is the level of need here, even though we're smaller than? Deerfield greater. They have a larger staff to deal with that, but do we have a, a greater need? And then is there any other way that um, we can look at shared resources in any way? And because right now I can't defend that because I can't explain what the other schools do. Right, right. I and mean, I, I can't speak to um, the exact level of, of need that's at Deerfield. I just know it's what's here. Right. And what we need, yeah. Um. The shared resources part also gets tricky. Uh, we are trying to do some shared resources of um, sharing of BCBAs um, across. We do shared resources of um, uh, PT and OT, you know, those kind of positions um, across. Um, the problem with the case manager is basically what this person would be doing a lot of case management work. Um, we start sharing them across, you know, I imagine the small schools could share, but what percentage are they here? And if they're not here during, you know, days of crisis, you know, you know, it's, it's a tough, it's a tougher model to right. to, to swing. Because I do, I do hear that the needs here are unique, but I don't know how they compare to 
especially Deerfield. You know, and I always look. Deerfield that also has a rise. Also has a rise in special ed, um, significant special ed. In, and I kind of said this like we're doing a better job of identifying mm -hmm. and and you know getting programming that's in place. And I think there's also a better education even amongst the parents coming in about the availability and what can happen. Um, you know, also level of accountability is higher for teachers um, for those um, for those students. So, yeah, so I think that it's a little bit of both. There there, there certainly is an increase of um, special education in our district right now. They're saying they're seeing it probably across the state in the younger years, and they're trying to determine whether or not, you know, you see the different kind of things from screen time to, you know, parenting styles to, you know, whoever, whatever group wants to point the finger what's causing it. Mm -hmm. um, but I also would also say that we're identifying earlier and we're putting programs in place earlier that save this money down the road. And also, besides just save this money, this gives, it gives the students, um, you know, to make, uh, to make progress <coughs> faster. But to your early point, Deerfield does have a position similar to this. So yes, and they also have other, they have, as well as other, yes, as well as other yeah. positions. So I think what would help is <clears throat> seeing some kind of, not as hierarchy of, or seeing some kind of like uh, game plan chart of what those positions are and how they relate to what we have so that um, if we do push this forward that I can, or we can speak with some certainty about how we compare and how we're using our resources to the other schools in the district. Okay. Additional comments? Choice next? Or? Yeah, so we can talk about school choice. So there was also an attachment for that. Um, our school choice revenue looks to be a little bit up for FY21 compared to FY20, not a ton, but certainly helps. Um, that's based on the cherry sheet that was issued in January, late January. Um, so I think when you look at the number here and you see the significant increase over last year's expenditures, it's a little bit shocking. Um, but with that said, we have built the account back up. We do have some reserves that we're, we're planning on having at the end of fiscal year 20. Um, we're looking at $160,000 roughly for a balance rolling into next year, which is um, quite a significant level more than what we currently had. Going into 20, we had 96,000. So we're doing a good job of putting some money away, which is what we wanted um, to do going into this budget year. So looking for next year, one way to reduce the general fund budget is to put some of those expenditures on school choice. And um, it is more than what we would be bringing in for revenue, but we were talking about trying to spend a year in arrear. Well, we're not there yet. We don't have a year in arrear built up, so we do need to live home, yeah. Yeah, live, whereas some of the other schools are able to spend what they earned last year. So we're in a little bit different position with that. Um, and short of eliminating additional positions, um, funds would need to be absorbed either here or in another funding source. And at this point, all of the other funding sources that we have are really exhausted. We're using any grant money that we can. Um, we're using as much early childhood and special education funding as we can. Um, so the primary increase here is in wages. Um, we do have IAs that we added on. There were wage increases, obviously, for existing staff that fall under this line already for FY20. And then that SPED transportation, um, we have a $26,000 increase that we're expecting for next year. Mm. So that in itself is a significant addition to this line. That's an explanation of the funds. some of the school choice to make repairs to um, the boiler, is that right? It's on the list. That's accounted for? Yes. Right. Yep. Right. Right. right there. Yep. And even with moving those IA positions on here, we're still looking at having an ending balance that was higher than last year? Yes, because our revenue is up. And then last year, 
you know, I wasn't here obviously, but the budget crisis, I think funds were frozen and they really, Mark and Judy did a good job of kind of managing what got paid from where and we were able to end the year in a better position than they anticipated we would, so that's helping build up that surplus. We're looking at going into FY21 with 162,000 and leaving FY21 with 153,000. So we're looking at using about 10,000 of our rollover and all of the receiving money that's coming in. And it still leaves the school in you know, a decent position and I think there's gonna have to be the goal of continuing to try to build that up, not growing it year after year. You know, I feel like we're kind of at a point where if the choice numbers stay where they are, we really can't spend more than we're bringing in. Otherwise, that's going to quickly get depleted. <coughs> we'll put us right back where we were. Yeah. Right. Anything below 70 k is nothing at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's uncomfortable. You know, I, I don't think that this is the ideal situation for us to be in. But I also think that unless we're deciding to cut several staffing positions down, and maybe that is the end result. I mean, then we'd have to work with that staffing, and you guys would have to provide some feedback on that. Um, but that's the reality is, you know, as Greg said, it's the increase is salaries, salaries alone. Yeah, I struggled with when I looked at um, some of the numbers that we're moving two IA positions onto mm -hmm. school choice. And that was part of what's bringing the budget down, or the request down. I, I struggled with, I, I feel like we're going like back to where we were. And so when I read that, I was like, that's not the direction that I want to go in. I, thought, I felt like going into this year, that was exactly what I did not want to do. I don't know where that leaves us, but in a, a principal yeah. position, that's not what I, I, I felt like we were going to try to stay away from. And I think part of the challenge is also that our other funds are not as healthy as they were. The special education revolving fund, that essentially is getting all eaten up in this year, which helped support the current year's budget numbers slightly. So, you know, pulling that 45,000 off of special, special education, that's our two IAs right there. So, you know, we're borrowing from one pot and putting it in another, you know, is essentially what we're doing. Um, but unfortunately, that account cannot continue to fund that. And then the early childhood um, revenue for this year, I know that was one of the first conversations that Ben and I had with the new early childhood coordinator was revenue is down. Um, there's more kids with higher needs coming into the program that don't have to pay. So our tuition income is not as high as we anticipated. And going into next year, we're seeing the same thing happening. So. And we ended up um, cutting the extended day program this year for preschool. And that ran from the beginning of the year to Thanksgiving break. Mm -hmm. Still discussion mode, so oh, fair enough. schools together unless it's in our favor. <laughs> um, Frontier's assessment will be down in some of them this year. Though the budget hasn't been released by Frontier yet, but we know that the enrollment for some of them is down 11 students, so that's likely going to cause a savings for the town. And the transportation reimbursement is up. Right, and transportation for Frontier will also be down 
um, because the reimbursement rate is up. And as we remember, the contract that we just signed, all the increase to the transportation went to the Frontier Bill. And what do you know, we got more transportation funds than we had the year prior. So those are positive things on the global kind of mm -hmm. year. You know, with the problem, you know, I think we start, the problem is you start putting the game next year, you got a larger sixth grade class we kind of talked about. I imagine mm -hmm. it's going to come back around and someone's going to get hit by this Frontier assessment, but they are going to, when there's winners and losers, they're going to win this year. And Frontier's budget is? Has not, the full budget is? There's not been a public draft yet. So it depends on what that number is. I mean, if we're getting lesser percent, if the whole number is still going up a bunch, then my sense is you're saying what you're saying so far is assuming that we had the same budget, they had the same overall budget as last year, that we would then have be paying a smaller share. But they will have some sort of increase, one assumes, because they got to pay for salaries too. There looks to definitely be some. There's a savings over what it might be, but it's not necessarily a less than the number we paid last year. We anticipate that it will be less than what was paid last year. If, if I, I mean, I'm, based I don't have the information. Based on the fact that it's in subcommittee right now, which I mean it's a public meeting, but based on the fact it's in subcommittee right now, they don't usually raise the percentage when Keats on the committee. Right. Um, you know, they're not going to looking to raise the previous number that we presented last time. That right. previous number has a savings to some of Okay. So they still may bring lower that number. Oh, the previous number. So the savings you're saying is based on what you proposed for budget for the first round in okay. the subcommittee. I understand. But like I said, it's kind of difficult to talk because they've got to be careful to you know not stepping on the committee members' right. toes that they haven't voted a budget. But I'm um, likely to go. Over. It's a good. It's it's lined up because of enrollment. Enrollment alone, in, in I think Frontier overall, and then overall is going to have a an okay budget. Mm -hmm. um, I hate to say good budget because people have different, have different <laughs> uh, quantifications of an okay budget. They don't have a bad budget, let's put it that way. Um, and then we, that's even before we looked at, we're looking at paying down percentages of the assessments with E&D. So there's, there's still going to be some other... I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just saying that, 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 that someone's not going get to uh, get hit hard on the frontier budget. Um, in fact, they do the best out of all the towns this year coming around. <clears throat> so the 4.5 is that that does include the the team leader future. Yes. Yes. And then if we want to, or if there was a suggestion that not moving the IAs onto school choice to bring forty-two thousand dollars back onto the general fund, which would be according to this about another one and a half, one and three quarters percent. Yeah, around another 45000 or so. Plus. It's three I additions, you said? I believe it's two. two. So I feel like those are our negotiating positions right now. Whether or not that we as a body, we, we were, would, I mean, we're not voting to accept a team leader position, right? It's, it's recommendation. You're voting on budget. Yeah. And whether that's going to be included or not. Right. I mean, you can, you can within your authority to go into line items of the budget and make recommendations or, you know, um, those kind of things, but overall. So really, I mean, everything on the budget is, as you're saying, is very, Everything's tight. The only thing that yeah, okay. the only thing the only thing we, we can move are the ideas of position. So whether or not, whether or not if it's got to go lower, okay, if the committee's got to go lower, then the administrative, then we the, the best process would be, you know, what do you value in the sense of your planning moving forward that you'd have to cut first, okay. you know, and I, I probably would speak that we would reduce an IA and try to figure that out. It would cause a re it cause a, a major reshuffling because I think that position is more important. I think the position to manage those um, cases um, and um, provide some relief administratively um, as well, um, doing those kind of things, I think is the most important thing right now. 
think then it's your your point, point to jump in at this point. I know I know the reduction of IAs also causes a has, it, has multiple effects because um, where are you going to pull them from? You have those that are required to have additional support, and then you have. Um, I, I think the four point five nine is a is a needs based budget and not a want. Um, and and that's been our our practice all all along. You know, um, that doesn't take away that the fact that uh, the numbers are tight across the board. But um, you know, for for me to gather feedback um, from from staff um, and present here, that's I mean, that's based on discussions and. Um, in, in everyday life <coughs> here at SES. So I think what I'm, I mean, what I'm trying to roll around in my head right now is the team leader position, adding that onto the budget, looking at the two IAs that have gone onto school choice, whether or not we put them on school choice or the general budget, and then if that's the case, that we feel like the team leader is, would be a, um, might take precedence over one of the IA positions if we had to choose. So it doesn't add up that way because those positions are different positions than what would be removed. Right. You know what I mean? You're just talking about general. You're talking about general stacks. Of, you're talking about employee number and you're trying to reduce that number to get you that, what's the number we're looking at for IA? You know, if you reduce by one IA, it drops it to 3.6. Yes, and one IA is not a full percent. It's about three quarters of a percent. Because it's also, you're going you're gonna to cut step one because it's union. Right. So step one is just, it's not even 20,000 right. a year. Right. You know, so, you're, you know, again, you, <laughs> right. I think what might be a better approach, could be a better approach, is to say, you know, to decide on the school choice, have that discussion of what you want to do there, and then if we know that we have to roll those two back, what's the dollar amount that we need to reduce the overall by? And then Ben and Darius and his team administrators decide, like, does that equate to IA positions, or does that equate to cutting the team leader? Because my what I'm hearing is we're not necessarily needing to decide that by specific positions in this group. If it's fifty thousand, Ben would have the option to use that fifty thousand for the team leader versus two IAs. I think you captured what I was. Yeah. <clears throat> what you presented at our last the first proposal. Mm -hmm. Um According to the last page on this legal sheet, it was taken twenty-seven thousand out of the spend revolving fund. And what and, and what you're presenting on this one is taking fifty-six thousand out of the spend. Yeah, revolving the fund. the last time that we met, I think I had had the caveat on our summary that I hadn't fully looked at all of those funds yet. Mm -hmm. School choice was one that I had definitely looked at to start to plan out, but mm -hmm. needed to go back to. Um, Karen, the SPED director, and Amy, the early childhood director, uh, to work out some of those other ones. Is that something that that we could get educated on? Because there's obviously been changes in how that is used recently because of all the changes in the Horizon program and the amount of money that's been coming in and the amount going out specifically for that. Um, and Sort of my concern is that similar, we, the, the, what we ended up going through with the school choice thing was all of a sudden finding ourselves, you know, one year spending every last dollar and then even if we hadn't had the mistakes, it still would have been like, if you had been looking at the budget at that point on a two year basis, you would have said this is crazy because we're spending every last dollar and then the next year, just by doing nothing, we're going to have 
pick a number, 50,000 less or 75,000 less or something like that that we can spend and, and you know, the thing's going to blow up in our face. And, um, or at the very least, we should have made crystal clear to everybody involved in this operation, including finance and select board, that that's what was going on. So there was no looking back, well, why didn't you tell us or something like that. So I looked at the school choice presentation here, and while I think it's, I wish it was spending a little less, um, because I wish at least it was spending uh, no more than we think we'll take in. Okay, but it's not too much beyond that, but I don't, you know, it's getting into the area where I think that's, you know, I like the trend that we've got, but I don't want to reverse it. It reverses very quickly if you don't watch out. With the SPED revolving fund, I don't have a clue, okay? I would love to see a page that laid out, you know, FY20, what we started the year with, what we, what we took in in revenue, or are taking in in revenue, what we're spending it on during the year, and then what we're projecting for FY21, which then included the numbers that you've used in building this budget. It was just, we would have a look at it and see, like for example, I have no idea whether using this number at FY21, that has this ending FY21 with a projected spread revolving balance of zero. Okay, and if, the pre and if that's the case, okay, then what's that say about our FY22 budget? When we, you know, when you say, well, gee, that's next year, we can wait till next year, but we continually get feedback, we got to think longer term, and it's hard to make that sort of judgment if we don't have the information. And, and I'm going to run the same, exact same argument with the early childhood revolving fund. In other words, there ought to be a nice little one-page thing, just like you got for school choice, same time frame, you know, current year and coming year, and same showing where are we looking for year-end numbers so we see what's available going forward. Because otherwise, we're just like blind as could be. Yeah, the early childhood is a moving target, so it's, that one's a little bit more complicated. We do have projections in. When I started um, the beginning of this year, there was not a great model of how funds were being budgeted, so I have a similar workbook like this for mm -hmm. early childhood and for special education. Um, and there, it's been shared with my office staff as well as the directors of those departments and they're updated by them regularly. So for example, in early childhood, if we take in a student mid-year or if a student leaves, Amy's going in and updating revenue and tuitions accordingly and same thing with staffing if we have staffing moving. So, you know, we definitely have those pieces. Um, they're just not put together in, you know, this format. Um, I can tell you verbally that the special education account we are using every dollar of the tuition we're receiving from another district this for fy21 and in fy22 will there be same that tuition same coming in same anticipated, yeah, same anticipated tuition. Here. so the problem with the problem is that i think what you're trying to ask for is i understand what you're trying to ask where we can do a better job of showing you those budgets however the budgets change and can change from month to month and year, to, definitely year to year, and even month to month. And so it's kind of like where the state is waiting to see what its revenues are to depend on how much, what they're going to do for their budgeting and what they're going to give us. We're kind of in the same way within our own revenue thing. So we have a school choice student here who gives us, or several school choice students here that give us a certain amount of money. Now we can project they're gonna be an issue, they could decide to move in the middle of the summer and that's a $60,000 change in the, middle of the, in the middle of the thing. Or we have school choice students, you know, who come or leave, depending on those kind of things, and those numbers go up and down. So our school choice numbers are also up because our school choice went up. Right. 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 How, many, how, many, how many spots that was, but you know, it could go down next year. You know, we, you know, and it, it, we have these flux of, of you know, people coming and going, that kind of thing. So that's the part where it's like our revenues are not consistent. And so we can take, we can try to project, but I mean, it, it goes back to this budget and Sunderland's budget, elementary school's budget is so tight that we, any fluctuations in those revenues causes a ripple effect of the whole thing. I think, I know you guys all know that, but um, it's a, it's tighter than any other of these other schools in the sense of that, that they can handle the ripple effect because they have padding in, in those different areas. 
Mm -hmm. but, but I still maintain that what you've presented here on the school choice, mm -hmm. and all I need to do on my own copy or in my own mind is put by the anticipated revenues for each of the two years, put a big question mark, okay? Because, yeah, that can bounce around a whole bunch, but that's why you keep a cushion. Correct. Okay. Now, here we are proposing to spend the sped revolving fund down to zero, okay? And yet, if I had a similar sheet like this, there would also clearly be, you know, big question marks by the revenues, just like you said, because we don't know. But, you know, this is how you get yourself in trouble when you, when you eliminate any cushion and then all of a sudden, you know, not everything goes the way you like it. Now, I'm even willing to do that, okay, if we make it absolutely clear to everybody else at the table, and I don't mean this table, I mean the town table, that that's what we're doing because, you know, otherwise we're going to look around next year and something happens and, whoa, instead of taking, you know, 50-some thousand out of the special ed revolving fund, you know, maybe we're trying to work off a deficit and, you know, we can hardly use anything and then, you know, we already know we're going to get another teacher that, you know, another teacher because we've got another section coming the following year. And, and I don't want to be, I think we can do, I think it serves a purpose to show what's going on in those funds, even if we realize you take certain parts of it with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that's one, th that's, that's one thing on both those couple. The number of times I've heard questions here about IAs, okay, I would like just a simple little sheet that says how many IAs are being funded out of each funding source. Okay. Um, because, you know, it'd just be nice to have, it just sort of make life simpler. Where are they coming from? Where are they being paid from? I know that if you want me to verbally provide that information. You know, just, you know, current year and projected for the year we're talking about the budget for. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then the other thing I look at at the last page on this, you know, the whole budget detail sheet is I look at when you presented the one a couple weeks ago, the real, real bottom line. Which is the last figure of all funds. Okay, it was three million six fifty six. And the real real bottom line right now on this one is three million six forty eight. It's come down eight thousand. Okay. Um, and I don't know how that squares with a statement here. Uh, to reduce the general fund budget, remove two new IAs. That, what does that mean, remove two new IAs? Does that mean remove what, two, new, two IAs? Could you say two lines later, change the funding source from two IAs from general fund to school right. choice? So the so, original draft budget that we presented had two additional IAs. So instead of 25, where we're currently at today, right. there was tw a request for 27. Okay. So I pulled those out. That was the first cut we made was, you know, we 40, absolutely can't So if you pulled this. out 40, 45,000, something Correct. like that, and yet the overall bottom line only dropped by 8,000. Right, because those other funding sources were not fully built up yet. As I had said at the last meeting, I hadn't fully accounted. Well, that's not a matter of funding source. That's a matter of... Of, you know, that's what we're spending, regardless of funding source. So, have other things been added back in here? No, I'll, I'll double check only, and I'm just saying, I'm surprised that it only gone down 8,000. This 000. time to last time, um, but we did not add anything at all. All we did was cut or change funding sources. So, I'll have to look at the two spreadsheets and compare them. Okay. Um, now, I don't know Maybe Elliot knows, but I got a feeling Elliot probably is still a little early in the process. I don't know what the town's finances look like for this budget cycle. Um, I know that there will be at some point some additional tax income, tax uh, revenue from the new development. I don't know the timing of that as to when, when it hits the books. Um, I know, and I think. Uh, I think you said it and communicated to you that uh, I'm pretty darn sure there's no appetite any place for another override vote. 
so that uh, you know at this point I don't know what's what the, what the town can, can can pay for and what the town can't pay for um, so that I think it would be useful to work on you know a, a less desirable option so you know, at least in your own you probably already so have in your own mind but, <coughs> but me, I don't know let, if let me push back on that because so our job as my administrative team's job is to put together what we need okay. your job is to tell you what we can afford and I, the where I see the disconnect and especially in, in in Sunderland is that we don't know what finance committee can afford and so how do you make your decision and this is kind of like I think this is the part where this kind of system is broken especially when you have multiple tight budgets year after year when there's extra when there's wiggle room by ever, by all sides then there is a gear where you give a little bit more, there's a year you don't give, you know, and there's that kind of ongoing conversations. But if the apartment complex brought in additional revenues this year, mm -hmm. okay, and Frontier is down, mm -hmm. then the around $113,000 that we're kind of, I'm throwing out a guesstimate number of the total expenditures increase in schools may not be a problem to fund. And so then we're talking about cutting a budget and cutting what we deliver to students based on that you didn't have to. And we didn't have to because we don't have the, the two sides, yeah. you know, you know that kind of thing. And so there's a part of me that says we should move forward with what our needs are. Mm -hmm. You come through, if I bring forward two numbers, I'll tell you which one's going to be picked. You know what I mean? It's going to be one that's going to be reducing. We didn't last year. Okay. Well, we had to go for an override last year. It's very different. You know what I mean? We're not talking about overrides here for the right. camera and that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? That's not, that's not the, the game plan here. You know, the question is what number what number compared to the other needs of the town? Because I have no, and I have no idea what the other needs of the towns are. You know what I mean? Um, and we both, and I kind of said this last year, the two and a half percent has never been a real number. So it's kind of like, it's like the, it's like the speed limit. And you know, when it was 55, it was, it was a suggestion. Everybody's going 65. You know what I mean? And, and I can go back to the multiple years where the budgets came at 90 and 100. And the select board said you should be, or you finally said, I don't know who was saying it, but you should be around 70 on increase. But we were coming in closer to 100. You know, now this total budget's around, again, you said, I'm running numbers by you, but envelope numbers was around just over 110 if Frontier is down total for education. So that might be within the wheelhouse of what the finance committee is looking at, and they could say, you know what? Or they could say, put more on it this year you know, start to build your funds up for something else. You know, I mean, that's the kind of thing. It's yeah. I mean, one, <clears throat> I understand that, and I and I mean, part of me is thinking. I think what Keith is thinking that um, you know, maybe it's a little different. It's just if you're concerned about that, we're maybe or if I'm concerned, maybe that we're taking more than I care for out of school choice, and certainly uh, restricting our options going ahead for the Sped Revolving Fund by draining that, then, you know, maybe the number, you know, on the town part ought to be, you know, 20 grand higher and 20 grand less coming out of the funds okay. or something. Right. Or something. Okay. Right. But part of that is, you know, you're absolutely right. We've got to find out. We don't know what the overall picture is. Right. Yeah. Okay. And Ellie, you got any wisdom on that? So there are major... There are some, some major increases coming from uh, the radios, the radio, there's just the major increases coming from radio and police, yeah. but we are, we're, uh, we're, we're just starting at the, the right, right now. Yeah, so, so. And we had a meeting with you on <clears throat> March 2nd, right. you know, and so at that time we'll also have Frontiers numbers because Frontier meets next Tuesday, they sh should, I imagine, be moving forward with a tentative budget to move forward to the towns. Um, it's unlike last year where Frontier and some of them both were having multiple meetings playing <coughs> catch up um, due to the, you know, in our business office transition. Um, you know, I think the budget's in, in a pretty solid place for the Frontier committee to decide how it wants to handle it. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine, you know, it's their, it's their budget, it's their committee, but it's in a good place for us to have a smooth discussion and decide how to move forward. So, we will have strong numbers. They'll have. They'll be able to see the total asks by March second. And so the question is, 
I think from this committee has to decide is what number is being brought forward to March 2nd. Um, you know, and if this be again, that's before our public our public hearing on the budget is whatever it is. 17th third week of March okay is, is Tuesday the 17th is our public hearing and so that's when we have to have the real what we're moving forward let, let me ask you another question um, there's nothing in here that um, I don't think there's anything in here that deals with the possible costs of a chunk of students coming from the new development no but um, as we had uh, discussed previously, based on the current enrollment numbers at each grade level, we would have to have a significant, significant bump of students that were born in at the same time period to make a true impact. And that's on that's on the classroom population. Correct. Each classroom population. How about, how about for busing? For busing, we have. Um, approximately, and I and I got your message, and we I'll get those exact numbers. Yeah, I just want to be I, I just want to be clear with Elliot and with the select board that here is the situation as far as space available in classrooms, mm -hmm. space available on the bus, okay, and then the third one where there's no space available is extra sped costs, mm -hmm. okay. They're all unknown, okay. That we're writing a budget for with with no provisions for any of those. And so I think we ought to make it clear, but you know, on the, on the first two, the classroom sizes, the classroom populations and the busing, How many, this is what we've got for flexibility. Seven. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But we know you bus something. No. But I just, I, I think it just- So but a, when Ben and I looked at, so we looked at the other apartments building complexes in the area, remember we kind of shared those numbers right. and we said, if the same percentage per unit goes into the new development, then we would just find, we're talking about, it wasn't even, it wouldn't even, it wouldn't overflow. And as Ben said, unless they're all in second grade, then we'll have a problem. You know what I mean? But you know, given the regular flow, it's not the numbers. But they're right, the services will go up. And amongst those students, the likelihood if you get 15 new students, your percentage wise, three are gonna have special needs. And the level of those special needs are, you know, your, you know roll on that as well. Um, how high those needs are and what those costs increase at school without extra revenue brought to the school. So shouldn't we just be real clear on that possibility? Because otherwise it's like, oh well, Chris, you know, we gave you two and a half million dollars or whatever, you know, yeah. how many million dollars, so on, and we'll take it out of your budget, you know, to whatever additional costs are coming in associated with that. Whereas if we say this is what the budget is based on, very specifically, Okay, and here's, I mean, I, I, I don't think it's asking a lot in terms of preparation time or something, just here's our classroom populations and here's what our max is, and so we got this much room, and here's what our busing max is, and here's how many are on that bus route, okay, and then the sped is an unknown, okay, but then say, if we exceed, in the first two things, the classroom populations and the busing, if we exceed, happen to exceed one of the numbers, even though we don't think we will, we're going to come back for help rather than having to find it in our budget, because we don't have room, okay? And in the SPED one, suppose we get a couple of serious SPED cases walk in from there. What are we going to do? If we're going to go back for help, we've got to make it clear to them at this point in the process that that's not in there. But those aren't, statistically speaking, I wouldn't be betting on that. I'm not betting on it. That's why we're not asking. That's not why we're not putting. We're not putting but are, you, are, you, are you saying that we should say that because revenue will be up because of this apartment complex, the school should get a share of that revenue? I'm saying that. <laughs> let, me, let me put it this way. The town budgets. Think of unpredictable things. Okay. Yeah. Unpredictable. One of the unpredictable things in the town budget is snow and ice removal. Right. The town budgets for snow and ice removal by basically having some number, but basically an understanding that at the end of the year, they figure out how much of a deficit they went into, and they just have, uh, you know, that just gets paid. And nobody, we'll transfer from free cash. Transfer, right. And nobody gets real excited about it, okay? And we just understand that you haven't got in the budget enough for those unknown events, okay? To me, that's a similar situation. 
because we've got a more specific unknown event this year. Okay, then we have, I mean, there's always the unknown event in the school who walks in the door each September or who walks in any time of the year and what sort of costs do they bring with them. Okay, here's one that's potentially more, you know, much more unusual just because there might be, and I'm a little more worried because a quarter of those apartments are supposed to be for affordable, okay, which may be more likely to be uh, satisfy the rules when you've got a family of three or four or five than a family of one or two that just are adults. So I just, you know, I just feel like it's in our interest to be clear that, you know, what our risks are, even though, you know, a couple of them may be smaller, but I'd like to be clear. And then the one in special ed, just to sort of say, you know, I'm even sort of, I'm happy sitting there saying, what do you want us to do if we get a couple of serious pet issues coming in from this possible new population? It's just freely to ask the question. I, I assume, like, this is an issue any year, and it can happen with or without a partner. Right, uh, but... And the circuit breaker, I mean, what... What's that's the, the following yeah, year. That's the following year. And you get paid back a year later. So you will get reimbursed in the following year. So what we would end up using is, what do we have for our... It's, what's our E&D? What is our free cash? It's school choice. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, what did you, what did schools do prior to school choice, having school choice reserves? Well, um, one of multiple things. One, you may have to make mid-year cuts in order to, to right. meet the needs, of, which is an awful place to be. And two, right. you go to town and you ask for town to um, either, you know, you get on a mid-season mid town meeting and you say we need additional funding for such and such emergency, you know, and. Um, there were some towns, and I think I did mention this to this group, that there were some towns that, it, when I was in Pell Women's School Committee, they had, the town had, right, a, had an account, had, an, had a warrant every year for, you know, it's probably before they started building up, you know, school choice, they never touched it once school choice right. started doing, but they had a, a warrant that was just, it was $30,000 for an unforeseen special, um, special needs need, and you could go to the town to get that money. I mean, that's, Again, I think that was probably put into place and then kept on the books prior to school choice and when, you know, Bellman ended up being a school choice bank account, so to speak. Okay. Um, All right, well, I just, whatever. Just for broader understanding, when do those the apartments haven't been occupied yet, have they? No. When do, does the town foresee revenue coming in next year? I don't know. Okay. And then I, just a couple of other things. I thought I heard that we had, that there were 24 IAs, but then you said 25? Yeah, so there, there's, funds earmarked in the current year budget from the IDEA grant to pay for a half-time position from now through the end of the year. That position's not been filled, but we've accounted for that next year. Okay. So okay. this year it makes it 24 and a half if we do fill that position. How long does that grant last? Um, we get the grant every year, but it, we're basically getting additional funding to support this. We won't be able to get it next year. And of those 24 and a half, seven are one to ones? That's what you said, right? Okay. Shall I get a moment? <laughs> That's all right. Questions are good. And the, the, the other important thing is understand that in early childhood is that they have, it's, students are coming in as they become of age. So, right. yeah. Yeah, good, so. And, and we're looking at. Um, five to seven students coming into the early childhood classes starting from January 2nd through the end of the year. This year? This year. Yep. And those are to, the, um, to the point where right now we have um, between the two classrooms, four IAs and two classroom teachers. And um, next year, the placement that I've put together has five instructional assistants and two classroom teachers. Because of the needs. Are any of those one to ones? Um, it's it's kind of a different model I guess in in preschool. You know, it's more more of a, a self contained and um, but some but some of the students need that extra close support for, for safety. Um, and if you look at um, if you were to look at the breakdown of where we have support across the building, a lot of that is front-loaded in grades um, pre-K through two, um, so that um, 
you know, it's the, the early intervention acts as the best um, model to help the students experience success as they become more independent. We added a position a couple of years ago, a year ago, early childhood interventions. Yep. Is that the proper term? Yep. Has that worked out as hoped? Absolutely, yeah. Do we need any direction going forward with the, what we want to do or how we? Well, on the second, I say I'm going to be meeting with the select board. Yeah. You guys are really meeting with, <laughs> with the select board and the finance committee to propose <clears throat> what we're doing this year. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a decision coming out tonight of what you're doing this year, either you're going to have another meeting or right. make it up on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> get up on the spot yeah. or take what you have now going to that you know I mean it's a I don't see a, I mean certainly taking what we have now and going to that is fine as long as we understand that I wouldn't feel locked into like that's what we got to yeah. you know present through the whole process you know right up to the public hearing and then vote on it I mean it's is that, you know, well, I mean, either, either you bring a budget forward that you believe is the needs of the school right. until you get told that we can't, we can't, find it. We can't, we can't support those needs, we're going to have to ask you to go back right. and, and even though it's your needs we're asking, you know, I mean, there, there's But a, if we go with this to the select meeting with the select meeting on the second part, yep. depending upon the outcome there, it may be like, okay, great, we're all set with this, or it may be that... You know, well, we got a, you know, tug of war going on. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep the dialogue alive. Um, just to touch on, Keith, we're, we're planning on retreating 9K and the uh, choice money. That's on on paper, right? Uh, what do you mean? We're from year 163 year to 152. Yeah, right. Right, you're in balance, right? And that's that's the wrong direction. We know it's the wrong direction. Does it make sense to do that this year, or do we put a, a stake in the sand and say, not a step backwards and try to move, I mean, does this number move up? Right, well, that's where I'm coming from. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting with a stake in the sand saying we can't put anything on school choice, not after what we went through last year. It has to be, I, I feel like I, I made a commitment last year that we are gonna try to rectify school choice and we weren't gonna go the other direction this year. So, I mean, I'm looking at the two IAs, I'm like, this is exactly what we said we were doing. And I would, I, would, I would much rather move them off onto the, the general budget. Same. I'd um, like to go to the selectmen with those two with that onto the general budget. And say this is what we this is what we said we would do. I'd like to start there. Wait, I'm sorry. So we would like the two IAs in this version that got moved on the school choice. We would like to see them move back onto the general budget with what we take forward to the selectmen. So you're going to add a two percent of basically almost two percent. To, to the general. And then we have an, I would say, we're bringing forward an unrealistic budget. So we're asking the, we're, you mean, because then we're bringing a budget that we know the town likely <coughs> can't afford. And that gives them the chance to say that to us, and that gives us something that we can do. But last year when we went, this was the trouble we were in, and we said we weren't going to do this again. That so we if we take both those off, though, then we're going to be doing, we're going to be bringing forth. A school choice balance of two hundred thousand. What's that? Two hundred thousand at the end of the year. I mean, the difference from last the difference from last year is that last year we had a projected year end balance of for the current year. This was again a year ago. The projected current year end was was like seven thousand, and that was already after some serious cutting of stuff and some serious rerouting of funds. Um, and a projected balance for the end of this current year of uh, 50 grand, okay? And now here we are, uh, the projected balance for the current year right now, end of year, is 162 grand. How did it get from 50 to 162? It got there because last year's number was uh, like, uh, I think it was 60, 70,000, 60,000 higher than expected. 
that you had some year-end funds that you put into there that we then used for the art room improvements and that we even put a little more in there I think we haven't used. Um, and then the expected revenue for uh, the coming year we're using for budget is back up to, you know, it's, it's up a hundred grand from what we were planning on for this year. So the number's way up. So that number... So, so that to me is like, you know, I don't feel ne nearly so unhappy with 150 grand as I was feeling last year when we were talking about ending the process with 50. So, I mean, so in these fluctuating budgets, we talk about it's a nine, you say it's 9,000, whatever. It's very likely that the end of this school year, we're going to have $10,000 remaining. Yeah. And from our budget. That so we have all these, you have all these, and that's the, that's the complicated parts of these budgets. Yeah. And I know I'm probably saying stuff so that you guys all understand, but we have a lot of budgets that we don't know where they're going to end up. We know they'll end up, we're in the clear, we're not overspending, but as we come down, you know, things from like professional development where, it, you know, we, we have to hold money aside for teachers for professional development. If they don't all use their money, let's a couple, couple thousand dollars saved there. Or maybe, we'll say just 500, keep it even small number. They all add up to, at the end of the year, especially last year when we did a budget freeze, because we were worried about, you know, making it to the end of the year, there was actually a larger number that was actually in savings in order to create that, that cushion. And so, this year, that, that number is going to probably be a little bit larger, but as I just kind of was, that's my side conversation with Shelley is do you talk about that? We said, but you can't guarantee it because we could also spend it all down. Right. But the, realistically, we're more, we've been a conservative school for multiple years, I think, as far as Ben can remember. Um, but, you know, there's probably going to be additional savings on that. So, what's going to happen is you're going to, you know, that number is going to be a little bit larger next year with the savings. You but know. what it sounds like is the ten thousand isn't even necessarily the concern. It's the it's it's thirty thousand. Let's even if we could get that ten thousand off, it's still thirty thousand that it sounds like you're concerns. uncomfortable with. Because I get it. Because next, what do we do next year? What do we do next yeah. year when you know if yeah. school choice goes down yeah. and now we have that as a budgeted item? I, I guess. Yeah. See, see, I'm actually to me it's it just is a nice easy argument if we use the same number for anticipated expenses for next year as we have for anticipated revenue. Okay, which means instead of, you know, we're, use, we're, a, use we're the 336 to, instead of the 345. And we're mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to get a position to help with the special needs right. um, without, we're increasing staffing without increasing revenues mm -hmm. on, any, on any level. And so how do you do that? Right. And so it's an, that's the impossible task, I guess. And so, um, that's why, you know, I mean, you're just shifting things around. Okay, we'll put the IAs back on, then we're gonna put this new position on school choice. <laughs> it's just the same numbers, we're just, we're just jockeying them onto different, onto right. different line right. items. Right. Um, you know, you know it, I mean, quite frankly, you could put it on the school choice and then cut the position the following year. I mean, it, it, you know, it, we couldn't afford it, but it, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know, it's a... Uh, Do we need to vote on something here, or are we just giving you so Well, I we think we need to know discussion. what direction we're going you in for March 2nd. Either yeah. we're leaving things as they are, and this is what we're presenting, um, which would mean that you need to be comfortable with the school choice numbers and comfortable with the um, 4.59, or are we moving some things around? Um, and does that mean that you know if we're putting the two IAs back to local, are you saying, okay, let's go with the higher increase, or are you wanting us to maintain the 4.59 with bringing the two IAs back, which means we need to cut some something else? The other um, one thing that wasn't brought up is bringing one IA back to local and one on mm -hmm. keeping one on school choice and just splitting the difference. That was my next. Yeah, I was still around. You yeah. can't take credit for his thing after. <laughs> 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 I was about to say that. In my experience. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just looking. It's and and I, I I remember discussions last year how we were looking to have an ending ending balance in school choice around seventy thousand at at the minimum each year. Um, get give or give or give or take. And correct me if I'm wrong if I'm just uh, not not remembering it correctly um, but now we're looking for we're, we're double that um, so it is it has grown and so we're obviously in, in better shape but um, 
and there's always the unknowns, which we've discussed as well. And my sense is that, I mean, the thing with the school choice number as opposed to Chapter 70 money is Chapter 70 money uh, is like, you know, that's pretty surely not going to change if anything significant at this point. Right. Um, school choice, you don't know what the number is until the year is over because it's, what, it's based on actuals for the year. It's not based on anybody passing some legislation and saying a number. And, it's, and the cherry sheet can have a number, but the number, what really matters is what the actuals are. And my sense is this year, just on your monthly enrollment reports, that the school choice, uh, which was, I think, 48 and a half average kids for the previous year was where that number ended up, and this year is running 50 years, you know, touch more. And so that number shouldn't be any lower than, you know, what it was before. So I'm, I, you know, I'm less worried than I would be otherwise, to, because at least through seven months, the numbers are okay. Yeah. Yeah. So which are those two IAs? That's, which, which, which ones are they on here? Um, I don't know. Specific, you could pick any two. Okay. I, I tried to pick two that were one that was on the higher end and one that was on the lower end when I moved them off. So you're probably looking at 45,000, 48,000 if we were to move both, both of them back. But to move one? You could move the lower one at about 22, 23,000, or the higher one I think was like 26 or 27,000. I don't remember what department they work in though. That's Really so, doing that would eliminate the the nine thousand dollar retreat. Right. If you went to the yeah, and it would also keep the the increase to this four point five at under one percent. It'd be like five and a half, right. or five point three, or something like that. Right. I think I can be comfortable with that. Elliot. Yeah. I can confidently tell you that I, I don't know 100% right now. I can't advise you about the exact numbers of what we can afford, but I can tell you politically, when I mentioned last night, when I met with my committee and I mentioned the 8.32 that I had gotten in the first draft, mm -hmm. there was hackles were up very high. Mm -hmm. And I, I can tell you if you put both of them back on and it's going up in the area of 6.2, there's still, there's going to be an incredible pushback and there's going to be, there's going to be a great deal of frustration over the consequences of the last two years in a row, especially last year. And I, I certainly understand, Keith, where we're coming from and, and having this being built back up is definitely positive, but be, we're not going to be able to, there's going to be, there's going to be smoke coming out of people's ears if we're at six and a half. What's your opinion at the 4.6? At 4.6 where we are, I think it's, I mean, where this is, this is doable. Because, I think. and again, but what Darius was saying was that Especially. if you take that together with the frontier number, yeah. then you're looking at instead of 140 increase, you're looking at 110 increase for both of the big, the big two items in the budget. I mean, then that's, that's a gamble, but it sounds like it's... Likely, but I mean, well, we'll have that. There'll be no gambling at the time. We, we'll have that number at, the, at that meeting. Like I said, next Tuesday, we'll, you know, it'll be, you know, I imagine right after they make that vote, we can push that out to people and let them know what that number is. I, um, I think if you're willing, to, if you're willing to put it to five, what was it? ends up at five four or something? You change one e IA, that would make it about five three five, five four. Three. Yeah, I think there's that's there's going to be arguments. But I think it's worth one of the reasons that like I, I, I'm taking this is as I'm looking at, I feel like those the people with the, the smoke coming out of their ears are the very people I promised I wouldn't we wouldn't do this again. So it's almost I feel like that that's who that's who we're serving right now. That's true, and that's understandable. It's a rock and hard place, but you know, and you're looking at one of these is just a boiler repair. That's one I yeah. position right there. Almost entirely. So it's what's the uh, what's the um, you put sped transportation in there? Is that all the sped transportation or a part of it? It's part of it. 
Wait, ask me the question again. Are you talking about the part that's on the school choice? You transferred you transferred uh, 26,000 of spent transportation money into school choice. I didn't transfer choice. it. We need to add it. It's an addition to... Fine. Okay, what, I, what I'm saying is that. that instead of doing 26,000, you could do 17,000, and then the school choice number would be right year to year. But 9,000 back in the regular budget. That was more what I was thinking. Yes. Not, but 9,000 back in the, in the regular budget, which is three tenths of a percent, which is four nine. So to, to clarify, that's taking this off of the anticipated expenses and just. Just knocking down by 9,000 what you take out of school choice so that your number anticipated in your balance is the same for the two years. Okay, um, and then, you know, that's, that's the, the way to do that with the smallest amount possible is to do it like with that spec transportation money because you can take any number you want there. You don't have to take a whole position. What would you do? We can do anything you want. We can do a partial position. Out, okay, whatever. <coughs> yeah. yeah that was be you, know, you, can, you can come back and say you want the number to be whatever. But You're better off saying it that way and then, then having Shelly and her crew decide, you know, what's the easiest or way to do it. Because you want to have some kind of system to your right. madness. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, Elliot, what I heard, heard you say is that, you know, obviously, you know, with the past couple cycles, um, you know, coming in with that high number is not doable. And I think we know that. Right, but is there any part um, where either the administration or school committee could be more transparent? So, you know, we just want to make sure that when we present that whatever that final number is, so that there's just a clear outline of, of where we're coming from. I, it really doesn't seem like it seems that the numbers are all here, and it's just rock and hard. Right. Okay. I mean, aside from Peter has an interesting point about you know the the respect revolving fund, but that's an entirely it's not right. That's an issue. Right. Yeah. Really you don't. I mean, there's a point. I mean, you don't care how you get there. You're just looking at the number that's. You're looking at the bill. Right. You don't care yeah, what we eat. You don't care what we eat for dinner. You care what the waiter gave for a bill. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> You don't care how much we enjoyed dinner. Well, <laughs> or, or no, if it was all vegetables, or as a citizen of the <laughs> town, the part part of cares. Right, right. right. He also yeah. wants as good a school as possible, as good a town as possible, and all the same stuff. So, so am I hearing that we want this to? Yeah, we want to make some change want. on yeah. school choice. What do, you want? what do you want the school choice number? So, to be? And, I'm sorry. Okay. So the other. Um, question that you know don't need to have answered um, but just want to reiterate what what Darius said if um, if the budget is growing by two and a half percent just with regular costs contractual and operating costs if that's if that's happening on a on a yearly basis and there is the need for growth um, that's just a, a discussion to, to have, I think, at the, at the town level. You know? so, yeah, I mean, I don't know, and I don't know what the answer is, right. because right now, I mean, we're the, you know, and, we, and we've got through the, you know, the first, this year for negotiation, but the, the, the issue was that the actual percentage of salaries that moved up was 4.7. Was it this, mm -hmm. am, I in the right, am I in the right school? It was around 4.7 just in the salary line alone. So we started talking, that's 80% of your budget. There's no way we can do two and a half. And so the question is, moving forward, those other lines, we can't, there's nowhere else to reduce those other lines. And then obviously the buildings are now 20 years old or whatever the age of this building is, and the number of capital numbers, numbers are going up too at the same time. So I don't, I don't know. And anyway, we want full transparency, you know what I mean? And yeah. it's, it's also, and that's why I'm saying it's also difficult when <clears throat> schools take up the, you know, I, I forget the percentage of Sunderland we take up, but 60 to 70% of the town's budget, and we don't even know what the... For me, it's more like 
we don't even know what the revenue uh, side of it is. We just kind of hand us 70% of your budget's bill with not, not knowing. You know what I mean? Again, going back to the restaurant, we're ordering dinner without knowing who's paying. Or not knowing who, what the, how much money we have in the wallet for this particular meal. Uh, the two and a half is just such an arbitrary and integrated number at this point. Anyway. I mean, it's, you, know, you close the doors, you open them up, and the building's more expensive beyond painting. So. Right. Uh, so I think that the, <coughs> kind of the choices we're looking at right now, I think would be like moving one IA off or taking the 9,000 off spent transportation or whatever hours. Or yeah, however. So you, what, basically it's just say what you want to say, you want to see level funding school choice, level sp expenditures of school choice. We want to spend what we right, what, what we expect we're to take, take. What they're saying you're going to take in is that we don't want to spend any more than if, that. If I can. And I, I think what I would like to do is to have all of us hold hands in front of the select board <laughs> and say, here's, maybe it's 4.89 and that's what it's going to take for us not to have a decrease in the choice in the plan. And if you want a number that's lower than that, either we've got to make some really tough choices or we've got to plan on making a retreat in our choice revolving. Is that? Yeah, and that's, that's yeah. I think it's a better position to go in there and say, Sorry. we're going to spend what we plan, what we're expected to take in and not more. I would. Yeah, I, I just didn't, as after last year, I felt like I committed to the select board and the finance committee that we, you know, not, we're not going to put more salaries on school choice. We're not going to go back where we are. I do think that um, being able to have it level funded is, is equally, equally important. If we are going to put salaries on there, at least it's, we're not going to be losing money. I can work with that. The one thing that jumps out to me is if we take an IA salary off, then the, then the general budget goes up to about five point two, three in that area. If we just do the 9,000, it's going to be at like a 4.8, 4.9. And I think that difference between 4.9 and 5.1 yeah, is, do the four something. is huge. Yeah. Just so when people just look at that number, it's four, you're yeah. at the clothing store and it's yeah. right, yeah. 1999 yeah. as opposed to 20. Yeah, yeah that's why that was the reason for doing just the 9,000. So I just, I just did this and it, if we pull one IA off and put the IA back to local, it's 5.4. And then if we do the 17,000 to with the if we did 17,000, um, it's 5.17, so we're still going to be No, over but five. we're saying that we're just nine. change change the... Just nine? Just nine. Take 9,000 okay. off I of the spending. I've heard the 17 before. I'll take 9,000 off of the spending. So that'll put us under five then. Yeah. We're just under five. So that whatever it takes, so the anticipated year in balance for 21 is the same as the... I'm sorry, as the... Uh, um, anticipated year end balance for FY20. And to Gary's point, we're going to probably do better. We, th we think we can do better. We're not going to, our plan walking in. But the point of having a cushion is you don't know. Students. Exactly, exactly. But, but I, I think, think that's a stronger position going in than just some arbitrary. I mean, it's sort yeah. of like a reason to pay to that number, which puts you at a 4 or 4 9. Okay, we got it. Can you live with that? Yes. I was going to think about that too after. Can you remember that? That to me is. I'm fine with Keith getting all the credit. Who's his idea? I just thought of it first. I second that. Yeah. 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 Speaking for Shelly because she's doing all the work on this. Um, Shelly will draw this up and we will send it out to you. Unless it, if there's a major problem with it, then you can respond. If you can't obviously don't, um, do business per email, but you can respond back and I can respond to the whole committee that will have a problem and then and we can decide. Yep. We have to meet again if things aren't, or if you have individual kind of concerns, you can contact Shelly individually and then. Um, we have the general idea of what we're And Shelly, you, it was like, it ended up, it, it will end up someplace for a Fort not four nine. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if you want to just put that in your pocket. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we're going to present something that will come in at four eight to four nine. Yeah. That's okay. With having our school choice expenditures matching our projected revenue for the year. So we're not digging into the school choice money.
Right. So on to the uh, review of the uh, one-year settlement agreement, followed by a vote. So um, I would recommend putting that at the end. Okay. Only because you're allowed to go to executive session to discuss it if you need to. Fair enough. Or if we can just go ahead and vote it. It's up to yeah. you. We, I mean, either way, I don't mean to. Is there any. Um, we just vote it. Okay. Go ahead. So basically, I'll say what it is and then you guys can you decide. So basically, you know, as an email I sent out, we are looking for a one year agreement that is um, backdated to July 1, 2019 to June 30th of this year. And we're talking about a 1% increase for steps three through 13 and a 2% increase for steps 14 to 20. 14 and 20. Um, and we are going to continue to go right back into negotiations for a three-year contract and we're looking to set up those talks already. So. Um, okay, but then again, yeah, with 1% for steps. Three to 13. Yep. Two percent for steps fourteen and twenty. Great. Just got one, one quick question. I don't think it's anything that's useful in executive session. But did, does the negotiation start from scratch again, or do they start from where they? Work? We're gonna we're gonna pick up where we left off because we did all we did a lot of work that has nothing to do with finances before that. I think both sides agreed to that, and we just want to talk more about. Um, <clears throat> just vote on I'll, just, I'll just talk about it and you guys can say you want to go to executive session, that's it. But basically in the last round, um, the teachers proposed a uh, different kind of salary, a different way to address the salary um, gap between Frontier and Union 38 and, and the proportion of money which is going to take a lot of back and forth in conversation that we basically said we're concerned that may take several months and perhaps we should start with a one-year settlement to kind of bring down some of the, the, the tensions around this and so they kind of re, and re come to the table to talk about this new idea. And so the, the negotiating sheet committee was open to looking at this new idea, but the caveat was there's a lot of questions behind it and that it's like kind of feels like we we're starting from scratch on the finance end. And so that was the, that's kind of where we left off. And that's why, so yeah, we're, we're gonna continue Negotiation, but we're going to be looking again both sides. I imagine are one through your contract. <clears throat> Make a motion that we approve the one-year agreement with the Union Thirty Eight teachers. So moved. No second. All in favor? Sign your left way, sir. So you received, we received, and so Jessica asked us before the meeting began, but actually it's probably good for me to kind of go through it. So we're part of MASA, Massachusetts School, uh, Association of School Committees, and they, they kind of give us updates on policies that we should be updating, okay? And so they've sent out about 30 policies to update. Um, some of them are just small language things, and so as we're going through them, um, you know, Don and I are both, you know, Don's kind of the head of, keeping track of our policies, which ones are which, which versions, that kind of stuff. But we're going through them. We're, we're going to bring forward the ones that are most significant and then just show the ones that, we'll probably put them all on there, but the, there's some that are significantly changed or some like it's one line or, you know, that kind of thing. So they probably all have to be brought back for, before school committee. But remember our policy. So you've got this policy newsletter, which is really, it's really your cliff notes on to what the changes of the policy are, okay? Um, a lot of them are, regulations on things that we rarely run into. It's good to have a policy in case it comes up because it follows either a new law or, um, you know, either court cases, which would be law, uh, but, you know, trying to keep us out of getting in, you know, getting into trouble and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so remember our policy thing is we have a first time reading and then a second time vote. It's nice just the reading of the first group of policies. Um, the first one is, 
don't know how you want to do this one, do them all. Let me just kind of go through each one. Why not? I mean, I'll just kind of give you the brief overview of where they're at. The first one is a new educational equality. It's a new MASC policy, basically looking to make sure that, um, <coughs> making sure that, you know, that all, all students um, <coughs> are being treated equally and, um, and such. Um, the second policy is equal education opportunities, which was updated by MASC in February. Um, I'm trying to find a summary that they gave. In recognition of the diversified characteristics and needs of our students, and with a keen desire to be responsive to them, the school committee will make every effort to protect the dignity of the students as individuals. So that, I was looking for this, I was, that, that was the, the actual thing. I was trying to look for the, the summary on that. Um, and then the next one is the homeless students enrollment rights and services. It feels like we just did that, but then they, up, they updated it again. Um, and basically, you know, it's, it's talking about, you can't restrict students from enrolling if they are homeless and the different rights that, that fall into that. Um, and we're actually regarding homeless students. Living arrangements should be considered a new student education record, not directory information. Such records may not be disclosed without the consent of a parent or satisfaction of another student privacy related exemption. Um, and it talks about students being able to stay in their, their school of origin. You know, basically they're trying to create less disruption to students who are, um, whose you know, lives have found them to be homeless and in transition and that kind of thing, where they're trying to keep them in the same school that they're being bounced around. Um, and then, um, so kind of over, that's the overview there. Um, the other one, the next one is uh, educational opportunities for military children. Um, the update has been updated to reflect expanded definition of eligible students, which now includes not only children of active duty personnel, but children who are veterans who have been severely injured and medically discharged, and children who, of active duty personnel who dies on active duty. So, again, small language change on military children. And then educational opportunities for children in foster care. Um, um, attendance rights by living in attendance areas, other student assignment policies, or intra or interdistrict choice options are available for students in foster care and homeless families. The same <clears throat> on the same terms as families who reside in the district, according to the district, will provide transportation services to the school, no matter comparable to the transportation provided for all the students. <coughs> in the district. So um, that's the the highlight of change there. So again. Small things of the rules that we have to follow when working with those um, with students in foster care, students in um, opportunities for military children as well. So, yeah, I mean, with the Desi compliance, I was, I, I was on this policy subcommittee when they were little frontier policies. We could debate them. Yep, this kind of stuff. You pretty much have to understand. These are pretty straightforward. I mean, yeah. and, and there was you know, the question. This was brought up, I think, at the Frontier meeting was like Frontier meeting, Keith, where they kind of talked about, well, so the sub Frontier has a subcommittee for policies alone. Yeah. Should that committee get together and review all these? I mean, these are such boilerplate ones. Yeah. It's, you know, it's different than when you're having, you're changing what you're doing. This is, you know, there's not much argument that we should be doing these things and it's following the law. And so you could expand on it, but yeah, I think it's pretty straightforward. So anyways, that's the first time reading. You can look them over if you have any questions. Um, you can feel free to grab me outside of school time, so to speak, outside of business time, and I can try to answer them or just bring questions to the next meeting. But if you have a really complicated question, give me a heads up so I can make sure we get the data on that one. All right? All right, we'll vote those next time. Yeah, committee reports. Collaborative? Uh, collaborative meeting the other night. There's a presentation on vaping and tobacco um, by a parent group. 
uh, which included like lessons that could be used at different grade levels. Uh, they went over their budget, higher separation, uh, let's see. And then uh, a seminar on social justice at UMass on March 14th that they uh, advocated for. Um, a special education uh, spending gap bill that they're trying to find uh, support for. Uh, and then they went over a lot of the, the, the different stuff on the, um, the um, Student Opportunities Act. Uh, and the meal was good. Yeah. Just curious, the special uh, education uh, gap, what, what specifically is the gap? What we're mandated and what we're paid for. It's that when the, um, the Student Opportunity Act passed, they were assuming that schools would have 16% of students in special education spending 25% of their day in special education services. And this bill is actually written and sponsored by Joe Comerford, who um, believes that that is a significant underestimate. So she's commissioning a, she's trying to get this bill passed to commission a study to prove that that's an underestimate so that then down the line we can adjust the funding for the state. There was some discussion about the, 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 how the Student Opportunities Act was being was sold as a major um, change in budget and spending, and that the um, the actual repercussions of it are not exactly the reality is not right, what what was being promoted for all districts. Um, some districts are going to are going to see some help, but not it's not going to be this watershed change like it's kind of being sold to be. Mm -hmm. Or chapter 70 money is up a little under 1%. Right. Joe and Natalie did a, an event at our town hall was it just last week um, with the joint select board. And somebody started by saying, Thank you for passing the Student Opportunity Act. And Joe said, Don't thank us. Yeah. <laughs> You're not benefiting from it. <clears throat> Thanks for coming, Elliot. Thanks, Thanks yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, principal's report. Last Thursday, January 30th, uh, Sunderland played host to roughly 230 guests for our International Night celebration. Um, International Night helps to celebrate our wonderful, diverse community with international foods and music from around the world. Uh, we were sponsored by a few local businesses, including Frontier Pizza, BJ Wholesale in Greenfield, and the new Bueno Isano restaurant in South Deerfield. Um, additionally, our PTO, the Mass Cultural Council, the Frontier Regional CFCE Grant, um, Frontier Girls Basketball pr Program, who act as acted as the um, the, the servers um, for the uh, food portion of the evening, um, and SES staff helped to support the event. Our school psychologist and uh, counselor, Vicki Palmer, um, is always the driving force uh, behind making this event a huge uh, success. And additionally, um, she uh, worked collaboratively with Emily Dottillo and Amy Battisti, who are um, work with the CFCE. Um, so thank you to them for putting it together. Uh, Hero of the Month. Our first grade students have been engaged in an ongoing civics project that ties into Massachusetts history and social science frameworks. The Hero of the Month unit helps to celebrate diversity both inside the walls of Sunderland and in general. Um, some of the heroes recognized up to this point include Martin Luther King Jr., Greta Thunberg, Susan B. Anthony, and Muhammad Ali. Um, part of this um, ongoing monthly project includes a writing component where students um, uh, in their narrative writing pieces talk about who the heroes are in their lives. And this is um, uh, the masterminds behind this incredible unit are Susie Wells, or Suzanne Wells and Alicia Reed, our first grade teachers. And uh, today, um, I was out of the um, building at a meeting, but we hosted Tom Riccardi um, for his Birds of Prey assembly for all students, and it was a huge hit. Um, there was bald eagles, there was owls inside our gymnasium, and it um, was something the students really enjoyed. Um, that was sponsored by our PTO. 
And there's uh, next uh, week from tomorrow night is the FRSU 3A um, CPAC meeting, um, Special Education Parent Advisory Council. Um, next week we have a community appreciation luncheon. Um, you may have received an invite at this point. Um, Did you? Yeah. I didn't. And um, so it's for, it's just recognizing all of those who, um, who serve in our, our community and they're invited for a delicious meal of um, spaghetti and meat sauce in the cafeteria to eat with the kids. Uh, we have some, um, a family science night coming up at the end of February, Read Across America Day, um, where we, um, this year the focus is on diversity in literature and we are going to be having some of our frontier regional student athletes come in and visit the classrooms. And then it uh, just gets very busy from, from there on out um, for the remainder of the year. Is that community luncheon gonna be the same style as last year? It is, and so you are allowed to get seconds like you did last year too. So. No, but I, I, I have to tell you my conversation with the, the first table I sat with was, I think three first graders. Yep. And I, again, I'm not used to dealing with people of that age, but I figured, okay, we gotta start a conversation here. So my first question to each of them was, in turn, was how old are you? And I think they're first graders, I can't remember, but they were like six and six and six. So then I said, well, how old do you think I am? <laughs> looked at me and the first one said, 92. <laughs> <laughs> and then you lost them with the budget discussion. <laughs> no, no. I was just somewhat taken aback because I know I'm on in years, but 92, I, that's still, you know, that's, well, a big, so you, that's a big number. You age well. So then the second one, so I turned the next one, I said, how about you? Look at me, he said, 89. I'm thinking, well, at least it's going in the right direction. <laughs> with the third one, I said, well, you know, there's still hope here, you know, whatever. Third one came in at 99. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, you know, I guess, yeah, you know, you learned to adjust and well, do the, the invitation stands. Right? Yes, there you go. I will say you are, you're far more popular if you come in in full equipment as the firefighters and police officers mm -hmm. are. They were far more popular than us, us guys in suits. What's, so the, what's the equipment for a school for you? Well, you can show up in your biking outfit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, I had a great time. I mean, it was fine and it was, uh, you know, it was. <coughs> It was cool. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Yeah. So what day is that? Because I haven't gotten that. That is um, an email just went out, and okay. I'll double check. I put it on my calendar. So that's next Thursday. 15th. Okay. Um, it was from twelve to one, and the snow date being the fourteenth. Okay. All right, superintendent. I have. Just the news you guys all have been waiting for. We received more money. It's going to solve all our problems. Um, we received nineteen hundred dollars more in rural school aid after they did the adjustment of the nineteen, the two thousand seventeen census. So that additional payment will be added to the other money we received. So it brings us just about <coughs> ten thousand dollars in the rural aid because they doubled it from the year prior. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit better. Um, and that will come out in the second relief payment in April. So that is my big news. Other than that, it's budget, 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 and yeah, but not. Does anyone want to move to executive session to uh I don't think we're gonna need to sound like an appetite? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye.